Just like every SEO and digital marketer, you want links. Well, in this video, I'm gonna show you 17 ways to get good quality backlinks for your site. And spoiler alert, I'm even gonna give you an extra bonus way at the end, which gives you more powerful links than any of the other strategies. Let's get some backlinks. Here's the truth. Pages with a lot of backlinks rank above pages with fewer backlinks. In fact, a recent Backlinko study found that position one on Google has typically 3.8 times as many backlinks as positions two to 10. In other words, getting more links to your website correlates with better ranking on Google. And to be fair, this is how it has been since the start of SEO. Now, one of the big challenges for SEOs is how do we actually get other websites to link to our website? It's so much easier said than done. And if you've ever put together some content for your site that you're really proud of and you just post it and you think, ah, I'm gonna pick up some sweet links passively, they're just gonna come in, people are just gonna start linking to my content because it's amazing. Then you've likely been disappointed to realize that actually, real organic backlinking doesn't really happen. So I'm gonna share 17 plus one ways that you can go and get good quality links to your website. And I should also say that when I say good quality, I mean the sort that isn't gonna have John Mueller coming around your house with a big stick. Not that I think he's that sort of person. And if you don't know who John Mueller is, doesn't really matter anyway. Let's do this. Now the principle behind skyscraper technique is incredibly simple. Here's an example. Now let's say that we're a podcast business and we wanted to get more leads for our podcast publishing business. We might look at a search term like how to start a podcast as a great example of something that's gonna bring us potential leads through our website. Now when you search for how to start a podcast, you'll see that a lot of information articles are ranking because this is an informational search now there is some commercial intent behind this because people who are searching for this are in the market for something, they just might not know it yet. Now if we click on the top ranking result, we see this complete step-by-step -step tutorial, which looks to be pretty decent. It's really in depth, it's very long. This looks like good stuff. Now the skyscraper technique is all about finding the best performing content out there at the moment and then going one level above this. So what I would do is if I was taking this on, I would look at this and say, okay, there are some elements of page layout that I can improve on here. For example, having these ads, we've got a free gift card ads and stuff like this, which kind of makes it look a little bit spammy and all this type of stuff. I might tweak that. I might make this a more in-depth thing. I might also add a video version of this. I might link this table of contents. There are lots of different things that I could do to improve this content. I would then try and write a better piece with all of the stuff we talked about, videos, more images, more tips, more detail, maybe an audio version as well. What I would then do is plug this website into a backlink analysis tool, for example, SC Ranking or SEMrush. You can get a free trial of SC Ranking at bestninjatool.com or you can get a free trial of SEMrush at thankyouninjas.com. But anyway, once you've put their URL into this tool, you can have a look and see the different websites that are linking to this content. You can then reach out to each of them and don't worry, we're gonna talk about outreach in a later tip and say to them, you're linking to this article, here's something that's even better with more detail, pictures, videos, all great things that internet people like, would you like to link to us instead? Now obviously by using this strategy, you get the benefit of having some great content on your site, which might pick up ranking on its own anyway, but it also means that you can start to maybe take some links from competitors. Tip number two to get backlinks is to actually promote your content. Now you might dismiss this and think, yeah, oh right, okay, cool, got that Tim, thanks. But here's the thing, most people spend 90% of their time coming up with great content for their website and only 10% of their time actually promoting it. Some people even don't promote their stuff at all. They spend all their time on creation and none on promotion. Now it's an easy trap to fall into, it's one that I personally fall into, but it's so important that you spend time promoting what you put together. And social media can be a great way of getting attention to your content. Now, most people, when they do promote their content on social media, they'll just write a couple of lines post and then they'll just put a link in and stick it up and there we go. But you can go further than this. By recording a video version of your blog post or your top tips inside a blog post or shortened snippets or by taking quotes and putting them in images, you can create social native content 
which actually provides value to people, you know, is the sort of stuff that people expect to see on social media. From there, you can link to your blog post from that post. And because you've added some asset like a video or a quote image or something like that, that people actually like engaging with on social media, you're much more likely to get people to give your blog post some attention. Backlink method number three is broken link building. Very simple premise. Lots of websites delete content or change their URL structure. And when they do this, if they don't implement redirects, that means links get broken. We've all been there. We've clicked on a link in an article and it's gone to a 404 page, an error page, and it's really annoying. Now, website owners don't want to be linking to broken pages, but you can benefit from this. And here's how. What you want to do is make a list of the sites in your market that publish the most information because these are most likely going to be the ones that have broken links. So for example, if you're in the medical space, you might target a site like WebMD, for example. You would make a list of these sites and then you would put them in some backlink audit tool. For example, Ahrefs has one, uh, SEMrush has one, Thank you, ninjas.com for a free trial. And you put this into their audit tool. You can then see the backlinks pointing at the different pages on that site. And you can filter them by the ones that are bringing up 404 errors, i.e. that page no longer exists. From there, what you can do is put the URL of that broken page into the Wayback Machine at archive.org. This will show you what the page used to look like. You can then see what sort of information was on that page, replicate the information onto your site, I write an article that covers the same sort of topics, and then go back to the websites that were linking to that old dead page and say, hey, the page you were linking to is gone, but I found this other one which works really well instead. Do you want to update your link? Broken link building is a really simple way of getting good quality links. Link building method number four is somewhat simple, and that is replacing outdated links. So you know the deal, right? Now, similar to the previous strategy, you can pitch your content on your website as an updated version of articles that exist elsewhere online. When you put your competitor's website into an SEO tool and have a look at the pages that are generating the most links, you'll often find that it's content pages on a blog, knowledge base, or content hub, which are the ones that are getting the most links. You can then look through these posts to see which of these posts might be dated and due for a refresh. For example, let's say that there's been some technological advancement in your industry and some of these posts reference old things. Well, just like broken link building, you can then reach out to the websites that are linking to this old piece and say, this piece is kind of old, it's kind of dated. Do you want to link to an updated version on your site? And remember that SEO is a competitive game. So if you're gaining links while your competitors are losing links, this is only going to help you. Strategy five is infographics. Yes, here we are in 2021 slash 2022, still talking about infographics. Here's the thing. Infographics are here to stay. They are a very fast way of consuming information. And with people wanting to make the information content on their website better and more engaging, Adding infographics to it is an absolute no brainer. And with more businesses recognize the importance of making their content on their website more engaging, adding infographics to it is a very fast way for people to do this. This gives an opportunity to the infographic creators, i.e. you and I. We can build infographics out of data that's already available or data that we collect ourselves turn it into a nice looking design and publish it on our website. When someone searches for WordPress infographic, for example, they will find this infographic from WP Beginner, which has earned over 200 backlinks by being featured on different people's content. And we've just featured it again. <laughs> the great thing about infographics is that people will often link to the source because they want to link to the data. So they will link back to your website and the page that created the infographic. Another juicy backlink in the bag. Now, if you're watching this thinking there's loads of stuff here, I don't know what to prioritize. There is good news for you. We have some free help available that can help you sort through all of this and work out where you need to put your attention to get the best results as quickly as possible. We have this service called the free website and marketing review done by the team here at Exposure Ninja. And all you need to do is go to exposureninja.com forward slash review and request your free website and marketing review. When you do that, one of the ninjas here will take a look at your website, your digital marketing. They'll have a look at your SEO and your links. They'll also have a look at your competitors as well. Then they'll recommend the things that they would recommend implementing in priority order over the next six to 12 months to get better ranking for your site and more leads and sales through it. 
This service is completely free of charge and totally awesome. So to request your free website and marketing review today, all you need to do is go to ExposureNinja.com forward slash review and fill in the form. It's super simple, very quick. And within two to three working days, you will have a video review sent to your email inbox. Boom! Go and do it, yeah. Okay, tip number six is all about outreach. As you will have noticed, outreach or contacting website owners is a fairly common component of link building. But how do you do outreach in a way that doesn't feel sleazy and salesy? Well, the first thing is to recognize that this is fundamentally a numbers game. You will have likely had outreach from other businesses looking to get links on your website. This is just one of the things that happens on the internet. And if you're gonna do outreach successfully, you have to become okay with rejection. This is a numbers game. You're gonna put out a lot of emails and you're gonna get a relatively low success rate, but you're gonna make up for it with volume. So how do you write a good outreach email? Well, there's a number of different strategies from the overly aggressive to the really ridiculously personal. Here's a great example from HubSpot. Hi, Sophia, I'm sure you get a lot of content submissions, but I wanted to bring to your attention a new guide we released about the ins and outs of Instagram ad advertising. Now, the first thing, this references the person by their first name, okay? It's not, hey, email address, or hey, website owner, or hey, webmaster, it's very specific. The second thing, it cuts straight to the point. It tells Sophia, hey, I know you get a lot of content submissions. Here's another one, right? People are busy. If they're not gonna do it, they're not gonna do it. But don't waste their time by going around the houses only to drop in the fourth paragraph, hey, by the way, can I have a link? It continues. This helpful how-to guide tells you everything you need to know about advertising on Instagram and how to drive ROI. In addition to sharing real world examples of ads that delivered results. Now there's something new because a lot of the content in this space won't have that thing. So this outreach is emphasizing the difference and how this article is better than maybe what they've seen before. Shameless humble brag here, the guide has been downloaded more than 5,000 times and has been retweeted more than 4,000 times. So I wanted to make sure you had a chance to check it out. Fantastic use of social proof. Remember, outreach is a lot about credibility. How does that person know that this is gonna be a good thing to feature on their website? Well, here it's very clear that this is a popular guide and that popularity makes it somewhat safer to publish on the site. The final question, do you think it would be a good fit for the Socialville vlog? I'd love to get your thoughts. Best Jack. So this is a great email. It's personal, it's friendly. It's not overly pushy, but it's very clear about exactly what it wants. Ready for another tip? Of course you are. Tip number seven, write testimonials for other websites. This is a super easy thing to do. So your business has suppliers, you have software companies that you use, uh, you have trusted partners, all these types of businesses have their own websites, right? And you can provide testimonials or case studies for them. Because here's the thing, if your business gets sent a testimonial, which is gushing and flowing and does a fantastic job of selling how amazing you are, you're gonna want to put that on your website. And when you do, you're gonna link through to the business that gave you that testimonial. So this is a really straightforward thing to do. Here's an example on our website where we've had a testimonial from Sarah Willingham, who's an entrepreneur and one of the dragons from Dragon's Den. And we link back to her website when she gave us this testimonial because it absolutely makes sense to. We want to send people through to Sarah's site. So she's earned a backlink from that. So you can do this for your suppliers, your software providers, any partners that you have. It's a great way of getting links. Tip number eight is to list your site on resource pages. Let's say I had a Ninja water bottles company and I wanted to get links. What I might do is I might do a Google search for best water bottle brands. Now, one of the things that you'll notice about a search like this is it's gonna bring up a lot of listicles on content sites. So for example, we've got some here which show the best water bottles of the year. Now, if I wanted to get my water bottle featured on here, what I might do is reach out to the author of this article and say, Hey, did you know about the Ninja water bottle? It does this, 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 and this. I noticed in your guide, you didn't have any that did this, this, and this. So maybe it's something that you might wanna feature. And remember, these people often have affiliate relationships with the sites that they're linking to, or they're using these sites as a way of grabbing traffic. So it's in their best interest to make their articles as complete and as good as possible. So they will be grateful to get nominations for good quality alternatives to the stuff that they've got listed. So here's what you're going to do. You're gonna find the articles that you wanna get listed on. You're then gonna have a look for the people's names. 
Now you can click on their names to see if they have contact details on the website. In fact, this person does. You can see their email and their Instagram. If they don't have an author page on the website, you can use a service like hunter.io to guess their email address from the website but also try checking them on Twitter as well, because often the journalists that write for these sorts of publications will be freelance or they'll write for a number of different publications. And if you have a look on their Twitter page, you'll often find in their bio an email link that you can use. Tip number nine is to find unlinked brand mentions. What? This is where people talk about your brand on their website, but they don't link back to your website. They're devils. So here's how to do it. Firstly, you're gonna Google for your brand name and put it in quotes if you've got multiple words in your name. You're then gonna put minus your domain name because you wanna filter out any of your website here. What this is gonna show you is the different businesses that are mentioning your website. So for example, um, if I do this for Exposure Ninja, we've got this article here, how Exposure Ninja manages a remote team using teamwork. What you can do now is if you go to show page source, you can actually have a look for your domain name to see if they are linking. In this case, Teamwork is not linking to us. They've mentioned us, they've talked about us, but they are not linking to us. So we would then reach out to Teamwork and say, hey, you're mentioning us, but you're not linking to us. Please fix this issue. We get a great quality link from Teamwork and everyone wins, but we win the most. <laughs> Okay, tip number 10, this is gonna to appeal to you if you're a little bit more competitive in nature, and this is to spy on your competitors. Here's the deal, a little bit like the skyscraper technique where you found the best performing content on the internet, you try to go one up, and then you contact the people linking to that content. Here, you're finding your closest competitors, you're analyzing their best performing content, and then you're reaching out to the businesses that are already linking to that. Let's do an example. Let's say that we are time management software, something like Rescue Time or Toggle. Well, we would go to a competitor's website and we put their URL into an SEO analysis tool like SE Ranking or SEMrush. This is then gonna show us the top pages on their website. So for example, if we go to their top pages here, we'll be able to see the pages that are driving the most traffic. And we will not be surprised to see that these are mostly blog pages. What we can then do is we can see the number of links that are pointing to each of these articles. Let's say that we wanted to beat this post that they had on their site, which seems to be performing well for them and is driving around 13 and a half thousand visits from organic each month. Well, we would then write a better version of this. We could then reach out to the 66 different websites providing these 130 different links to this article and say, hey, you've linked to this. Do you want to link to this one instead? It's even more in depth and it's got this great video and all this cool stuff, these bells and whistles. Woo -woo -woo. Again, it's one of those where if you're taking a link from a competitor, you're winning twice because you're increasing your links while decreasing theirs. If you're going to play, play to win. Tip number 11, digital PR. Now, digital PR is a huge category with lots of different flavors underneath it. We've done other videos about digital PR, but here's the biggest mistake that businesses make with digital PR or traditional PR. They write up some press release about something that nobody cares about, not even their mother cares about, and then they send it to journalists and expect them to publish it. Unless that journalist is utterly desperate, they are never gonna write about your CEO's new accreditation or this new product that you've developed. Nobody cares. So the important thing if you're gonna be reaching out to journalists is to make sure that you actually have something newsworthy. Find an angle. Now a good way to do this is to start with the publication that you have in mind. Let's say that you're a really boring B2B business, our favorite types of clients by the way. You're this really boring B2B business and there's nothing exciting or sexy in your market at all. You're gonna have some sort of trade publication in your space and that trade publication is gonna be crying out for anything remotely interesting. So have a look through that trade publication and see what sort of content, what sort of topics can you get published around and how can you create something newsworthy? If you really can't think of anything newsworthy, then later on we're gonna talk about studies and surveys, so stay tuned. Tip number 12 is to become a source for reporters. Now often when a reporter or journalist writes an article, they will need to reference some kind of external source. Journalists and reporters aren't experts on everything, so they will need some sort of credible expert to provide a quote. This is you. You can be that credible expert. I believe in you. You can do it. 
Here's how it works. You've got two options. You can use a service like Help a Reporter Out, Haro, or Response Source or Gorkana. Journalists log into these services and when they need a source for an article that they're writing, they will send it out through these platforms. You can sign up for these platforms and you will receive these requests. You can just reply with your tip or your quote or whatever and you can get featured. Another way of doing this is using good old Twitter. Its ad platform may suck, but it's an amazing tool for PR and journo requests. Just go into Twitter and search for hashtag PR request or hashtag journo request, and you will see loads of writers and journalists and reporters who need a source for their articles. Now, a lot of these will be utter rubbish, but some of them will be really awesome. For example, Exposure Ninja has been featured on Forbes.com a number of times using this exact strategy. Now, one tip for this, you need to be fast. A lot of these journalists, when they're posting out to help a reporter out or on Twitter using hashtag PR request, hashtag journal request, they are getting dozens of responses, particularly if they're writing for a top tier publication. So if you're gonna reply at the end of the day, it might already be too late. Another tip is if you're going to be replying to these people and they're looking for a quote, you can just provide a quote in your reply. If you look at a lot of the replies on Twitter for hashtag PR request, hashtag journal request, you'll see it's people saying, hey, my client could give you uh, feedback on this. Like what's the best email to reach you on? The trouble is with this is that journalist or that writer is gonna have loads and loads of these to trawl through. How do they know that your contact is any better than anybody else's? It's much better if you can just give them a tip straight away so they can skip that entire contacting and all of that rubbish step in between and just use the quote that you give them. Link building strategy number next is to start guest blogging. Now guest blogging can get a bad rap, but here's the thing, it gives you access and visibility in front of someone else's traffic. Most people do it wrong though. A lot of blogs are incredibly understaffed, particularly if they're a passion project, there's often not a lot of money in it and the person or people who are running it are completely overwhelmed, they wanna publish loads of stuff, but they find it difficult to find the time. That's where you come in, the knight in shining armor. If you find a blog that covers the sorts of topics that are relevant to your industry, you can reach out and offer to write them an article. Now, when you're doing this, don't offer to write them an advertorial for your business because they're not gonna want to publish that on their site. That would be rubbish and nobody would ever care anyway. What you want to do instead is to just pretend that you're a featured writer for their site. So get yourself in that mindset. Think if I was writing for this site, if I own this site, what would I write about? And what sort of style would I write in? Now, of course, you're gonna to wanna to reference your business and you're gonna to want to link to your website, but do it in a natural and unpitchy way so that they might even have you back to write again. Remember, if your content is too pitchy, they just won't publish it and you'll have put all that time in for absolutely nothing. Another tip on this is when you're reaching out to different blogs, asking about guest blogging, remember, you want to emphasize why you are an expert in this space, why you have a take or why you have some information which is of value to their audience. You are essentially asking them for a favor, so you need to make it clear why they should allow you to talk to their audience. If you're gonna be pitching out to multiple blogs, of course you want to use different headlines and different articles. Don't just publish the same thing in multiple places. Most blogs won't want to publish duplicate content and it's not really a good look for you to be sending out the same article to lots of different blogs anyway. You're better than that. Now, if you're watching this thinking, there's loads of stuff here, I don't know what to prioritize, there is good news for you. We have some free help available that can help you sort through all of this and work out where you need to put your attention to get the best results as quickly as possible. We have this service called the Free Website and Marketing Review done by the team here at Exposure Ninja. And all you need to do is go to exposureninja.com forward slash review and request your free website and marketing review. When you do that, one of the ninjas here will take a look at your website, your digital marketing. They'll have a look at your SEO and your links. They'll also have a look at your competitors as well. Then they'll recommend the things that they would recommend implementing in priority order over the next six to 12 months to get better ranking for your site and more leads and sales through it. This service is completely free of charge and totally awesome. So to request your free website and marketing review today, all you need to do is go to exposureninja.com forward slash review and fill in the form. It's super simple, very quick. And within two to three working days, you will have a video review sent to your email inbox. Boom, go and do it, yeah. Tip 14 is to guest appearance on podcasts. Obviously podcasts have blown up and people wanting to be featured on podcasts have also blown up. 
You can do this. As long as you have an ounce of charisma, you have some expertise, you too can be a guest on a podcast. So long as you have expertise and you're passionate about what you're talking about, then you can be quite a compelling podcast guest. Now, this is fantastic for links because once you are a guest on someone's podcast, they will link to your website in their show notes. And these show notes will often appear on Apple. They'll appear on Stitcher, on Spotify, across all these different podcast platforms. And usually that podcast will have some sort of website as well, where there's an episode page, which will also link to your site. So this is a great way of getting loads of links as well as getting you in front of other audiences. How do you get on podcasts? Outreach. See tip number six. Tip number 15, this is a biggie. This is a high risk, high reward strategy, and that is to conduct an original study. Now, once you know about this, you will never read a newspaper in the same way again, because you'll see how prevalent, 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 ubiquitous this strategy is in the world of PR. Here's the pitch. Most news articles need to back up what they're saying with some sort of number, some sort of data. Now, there's a few different ways of doing this. They can either go out and get that data or they can reference a study that already exists. This is where you come in. You can conduct a study for your business which has some sort of relevance to what you're selling and that can get picked up by newspapers, magazines, blogs, news sites and that type of thing. Now, you can both get traction on this when you publish the study because you can do outreach to share the outcome of your study and the news that it generates. But you can also get links naturally, organically later on because publications need to reference studies about different topics. So if you choose a topic that's trending or cyclical and you publish some really good data on that, you can find that you get a whole bunch more links every time that topic starts trending again because more publications need to link back to a data source. Let's look at some examples. Here's a study by Compare the Market. Now, if you don't know Compare the Market, they're an insurance comparison site and car insurance is one of their most popular categories. Now, How Clean Is Your Car is a very timely study for when they published this during the COVID-19 pandemic because there's some macro trends around diesel gate and how clean or dirty different types of car are. But there's also uh, an awareness about, you know, stuff in the air and viruses and dirt and stuff in the air. So it's a very trending, very current topic, but also tied to a longer term macro trend. They put together this, which includes things like infographics, uh, loads of data and some tips as well, and a link back to their car insurance page, and it picks up links. They then did outreach on this, so to get it featured in different publications all about cars, because that's topically relevant to the car insurance. And here you can see there's some of the different links that they've picked up. We've got some sites in Russia, we've got Belgian sites, Auto Trader, the Auto Channel. So you've got a whole range of sites here. Now, of course, not all of the links that you're gonna pick up from this are gonna be good quality, but you can get some great links on newsworthy sites if your insight that you produce in your study is useful or unique enough. Now, here's another example, this time by Sky. They've done a study to find the topics of small talk across the UK. Now, if you don't know Sky, you do know Sky, Rupert Murdoch's child. Um, But one of the things that they want to get links around is TV shows, because this is a big part of what Sky does. Now, so while small talk might not seem to be massively relevant to Sky's business, one of the outcomes of this study was that TV shows were a really important source of small talk for people, much more than, you know, their careers or their goals or their hopes or their dreams. Anyway, One mistake that Sky made with this is they didn't do adequate outreach. So they've done the hard work, they've put the study together, but they haven't promoted it adequately. And we can see this because this study has three links and they are all from (laughs) Exposure Ninja. (gasps) Okay, let's talk about some paid backlink strategies. People get concerned about paid backlinks. Are they black hat? Are they white hat? They are white hat so long as they are being identified as sponsored, okay? What can I tell you? A lot of the media industry is funded by undeclared sponsored content. That's just the way it is. So use that as you will, but lots of people are building links and paying for links without declaring them. I'm not advocating either way. You have to use your judgment but one paid way of getting links is through sponsored content. So you've probably been on a website and seen an article that says sponsored by, right? Usually this article is about something really dry, really boring, something so advertorial that not even their mothers would want to read it. 
Well, this is bad sponsored content. Good sponsored content basically looks like the other content that that website would be publishing. So it's interesting, it's relevant to the user, and it's not overtly advertorial in nature. This means that people actually want to read it. Now, when you're paying for sponsored content, make sure that you include links back to your website and you can include links to sub pages and deep pages of your website, not just your home page as well, because you've usually got a bit more flexibility about where you're linking if you're paying for the link. Now, sponsored content can be a great way of raising your business's visibility and awareness as well, because if you're appearing on a site that has a readership which is big on that space, getting in front of them builds a lot of credibility for you. But be careful that you're not doing it solely with that goal, because mostly when people get articles published for visibility's sake, they are really disappointed. Our final tip before the bonus tip is blogger or influencer outreach. This is particularly suitable for businesses that sell products or experiences. Now with this link building strategy, you are gonna gift your product or your experience. So say for example, you're a travel business, you're gonna gift this to an influencer with a blog. And in return for that gift, they are gonna write a review of what it is that you do. Now this should also be declared on their website. They should make it known that they have received this gift in return for the review. Now we've put this in the paid category because you may also have to pay them depending on their authority, their visibility, and how valuable your thing is to them. If you're giving them a holiday, often you won't have to pay them in addition to the holiday. Whereas if you're sending them a new phone charger to review and they're not really massively into phone chargers, you might have to pay them to make that feel a little bit sweeter to them. So how do you use this to get links? Well, again, you're gonna have to use our good old friend, Outreach. Now with bloggers and influencers, you wanna show that you've read some of their content or watched their videos previously, which would indicate that they might be a good fit for your product or service. You may even wanna let them know that you've been following them for a long time, you've really respected what they're doing, and finally, you have something that you'd love to send them and you'd love to get their feedback on it and see if it might be suitable for feature on their blog. Now, particularly if you're paying, you're going to want to be very specific about what you want out of the relationship. You might ask for a feature on the blog, you might ask for a number of posts on social, which again, should be appropriately labeled. Keep in mind that high profile bloggers and influencers are getting huge volumes of pitches. So you're really gonna need to stand out either with what you're offering people or with your story about why it's so special or about how much you love them or about how you have some sort of affinity with what they're doing. Just like any conversion strategy, you need to give them a reason to act other than it just being a favor for you. We have another video on blogger outreach which goes into more detail on this topic. So there you have it, 17 ways to get backlinks. Now, I did promise you an extra one, didn't I? And I said it was gonna be really powerful. I'm gonna get you some incredible links. So here we go. One of the most powerful types of link that you can get to your website is links from university websites. These are typically very high authority themselves because loads of other websites link to university websites. And they also have a good reputation because it's not easy to get content published on university websites they are very protective about what is shared on their domains. So links from unis hold a lot of weight. And then the challenge is how do you get a link from a university website? Well, here's what you can do. You can run a student contest where you invite students to submit competition entries in order to win some sort of tasty prize. For example, we ran a start your business competition for university students for one of our clients where we invited students to come up with ideas for a new business venture. We would give them a £1,000 prize and some other stuff as well um, if they won their competition. What they had to do to enter was to come up with a new business idea, submit it to us, and then I and a bunch of others would judge their entries to see who won. We then reached out to different universities and said, is this the sort of thing that you would like to share with your students? And a whole bunch said, yes, absolutely. We can add this to our website and our student portal, and we can let our students know about this competition. <laughs> Links from universities. When the students then entered, some of their entries were incredible. So we published information about their winning entries and the great entries that we had. We then reached out to universities again and said, hey, this student came up with this great entry for this competition. Do you want to feature them on your website? <laughs> and then we get another link. <laughs> I've even seen businesses sponsor scholarships and even parts of university campuses in order to get links from their website. So you can take this 
as far as you want. But I hope you've enjoyed this video and I hope it's given you some ideas for getting links for your website. Don't forget that if you want some help with this or any other element of your SEO or digital marketing, whether it's pay-per-click, social media, email marketing, web development and conversion rate optimization, this is exactly what the team here at Exposure Ninja does for our clients every single day. Request a free website and marketing review from the team here at ExposureNinja.com and we will analyze your website, your current digital marketing and your competitors and then we'll map you out a prioritized action plan for the next 6 to 12 months to generate significantly more leads and sales from your website. We'll send this to you in video form, usually within two to three working days, and it is completely free. It's so awesome. There is no risk. There is no downside at all. So go to ExposureNinja.com to request your free website and marketing review today. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe and leave us a comment below. What's your favorite link building strategy? Until next time, see you soon.